just uh, on my second day of the weekend down here building the Sonics and um, apart from yesterday's work on the fuel tank uh, which was uh, partially successful I think i um, yet to put it in yet and find out if everything that I've done is correct as in leaks or uh, anything to that uh, nature uh, just before I do though I just want to give a, a, a look a very uh, which I'm a little bit remiss by not doing it earlier and that is to give a shout out to uh, to Brian Cotton uh, Brian has been very uh, vocal in respect to lending any type of advice that um, I believe is absolutely necessary for us uh, new builders to the to the Sonics family if you will uh, Brian uh, has successfully completed a, a legacy uh, I believe most of it was scratch built um, he's an avid flyer uh, and I have to also sort of say too and uh, let's not forget his son uh, Adam uh, who throughout the build of his uh, legacy has grown to become a, a man I guess and uh, is now flying himself uh, flying himself flying himself flying as well uh, both Brian and, and Adam uh, do a lot of flying uh, be it only short or whatever videos but um, there's a lot of those that are posted on the Sonics uh, website so um, I'm gonna link uh, leave a link down below for Brian uh, and I just want to thank him again because he's been absolutely vocal uh, uh, lending me uh, some some good advice uh, pictures of his build and um, although not all relevant to the YXB he is by no means what I would probably uh, a class a very knowledgeable builder of the Sonics and I, I'm yet to find out what Brian does I, I've been remiss in that as well but I think he's fairly um, clever in, in, in all of the, in the ins and outs of this Sonics so um, anyway that probably didn't come out extremely right but today I'm going to uh, thank you Brian and Adam um, and today I'm going to just do a small amount of work on the on the the remainder of a partial uh, wing rigging for the elevators. I just want to get it right because I wasn't quite getting the trim right, and it dawned on me, and I sort of I didn't have that full range in the stick. So I've thrown the elevators on. Um, I didn't film that process putting them on because it was just an absolute pain in the ass putting them on but you just have to trust me that I did it but I'm going to start this morning and just um, give it a, a bit of a, a, a trial at rigging I've just set up I've drill, uh, drawn uh, drilled some witness holes in the uh, end pieces where they attach to I've forgotten their name but uh, the both ends of the push rod there's a witness hole that has to go in and I've threaded uh, to the distance that Sonics give you but I've Put the threaded rods inside of that so at anything if anything that it's in i've got a lot of room to move back out uh, to move back out again correct so as i'm pulling it out it's going beyond the witness hole and into the danger zone if you will so i've just got it temporarily set up uh um, i'm just going to set up the zero degrees at the moment so the level plane the level plane of the uh elevators now it's imperative if I understand correctly that the rigging has to be neutral rudder control which makes a lot of sense because with a with the rudder vaders they're going you know one could be down two mil the other one is going to be effectively not necessarily up two mil but it could be it could be uh, obviously detrimental to the rigging of the wing so I've got a laser line set down the backbone of the aeroplane again down the uh, turtle deck through the cross-sectional end of the rudder ensuring I've got a neutral position it corresponds with the pedals uh, now of which yesterday I did a little bit of uh, changing of the pedals and I have now got it to a far better uh, position they are well off the firewall compared to what the left one was you may remember that uh, it was too close so I've remade the small little aluminium pieces that come off the rudders and I'm more than happy with what I've done so I'll just bring the camera around the back and I'm going to show you neutral position for the rudder and where the two elevators are at the moment okay just down the rear of the aircraft here we're just going to I've uh, I'll start again we're just going to try the um, down elevator trim I've pulled the 
stick uh, fully forward. So I've got down elevator on that. And we'll just try that for 22 degrees. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. And we've got central rudder control on that. We'll just go to the cockpit. Stick is in the fully forward position. So now we'll try it fully aft. Okay, we're trying with the stick fully aft now for 10 degree up elevator. Hopefully this is good. Okay, you can see that I've got a little bit of movement in there which I've got to get rid of. And it's pretty close to the same on that side, so I've got to wind it uh, out further by the looks of things. So we'll give that a go. Okay, I've just adjusted these two uh, elevators now. Uh, so they're, oop, they are now fairly consistent with on or around about 10 degrees. That's that. Okay, so we've got that full the stick fully back. Uh, checked the uh, 10 degrees up on that, so we'll just look in the cockpit now. And we've got full uh, back stick on that. So that is that. Okay, I'm just going to do the uh, up and down elevator positions. Uh, you're just going to give me a hand. So I'm going to get her. I've just got that center line straight through the backbone of the aeroplane again. Okay, so just doesn't matter which way you put the stick, so just put it one way or other, maybe go forward first or something like that. Okay. Okay, so we've got a 22 degrees down on that, so I'm hopefully that's going to be right. That's 22 down. You know, obviously it's going to be good everywhere up there, so that's good. 22 down on this side. Yep, I'm good with that. Good with that, okay. Opposite direction. That's it. So we have a 10 degrees up. Uh, this is very, very hard to do with one hand. Just pull it, push, pull it, you know, just go as far as you can with it. Yep. Okay, so that's good. That is beautiful. 10 degrees there is good. And that is good there. So I'll just get you to uh, just let it go, stick go. And that's a nice neutral position. So I think that is all good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Okay, pretty much uh, completed that rigging. Um, I'm gonna call it stage one of rigging. Uh, the final stage uh, will be done with a proper protractor um, that will give me an accurate 22 degrees rather than my cutouts that I've done on to get it set up. It was just to get the right amount of threads on the push rods, the positioning of everything, ensure that I had full and free movement. Uh, it's just, it was just an indication, I guess. So, you know, full, full rudder authority, everything. So again, uh, please don't condemn me for my very rudimentary uh, method of getting the rigging right. Uh, I'm sure that any method uh, is a good method, uh, but this is just a, a, a temporary measure until I get the proper tool to do it with. That's when I move it up into the new shed. So uh, I'll get on to something else now and I'll talk with you soon.
Hi and welcome back. I've just got to the stage of committing to where I put the electronic circuit breaker in. Uh, I've just held off from installing the tank at the moment, the fuel tank at the moment, because I just want to allow myself a little bit more room uh, once this is in situ or, or I've committed to where it's going to go, I think I can safely then place the fuel tank. Now bear in mind that the fuel tank according to Sonics is that this glare shield has to be in as well uh, whether that's a, a weight thing I don't know to help it from pulling apart I don't know but uh, let's just um, go with the fact that we've got to have the glare shield in. Uh, so to commit to that I'd prefer to get this ECB in now uh, and at least it's in and then have the ability to be able to work on it at a later stage once the fuel tank is in because you obviously need to to get to this you know quite a number of times during during the build uh, and you don't want to be pulling things apart so I have tossed around with a little bit of an idea that I had uh, in having it both removable and accessible when the aeroplane is complete uh, and the only way that I can think of doing it is make up some sort of a, a thing like I've made here mount the ECB to the to the back of that and do all the work up here now and then if you need to work on it it'll fold forward and get to from the passenger side or line your back as some people probably do now the issues I have is that the only spot I can put it is here I can't really sort of put it anywhere along here it clashes with all of these cables that come into the back of the IFS displays. It's just too too busy in this area. There's all sorts of stuff happening. Can't put it up near the trim tab, so the only spot I can put it is here. The other issue I have is with the V16 radio. It's got a depth of around about uh, four inches in the old old school 100 mil, 100 mil, and there's also a, a VGA type cable that comes out of it and that comes out as so if, if your four inches is here this sort of is mounting at around about four inches so the only way to keep it clear is probably mounted on a bit of an angle like this which isn't a big deal uh, and uh, that's probably what I'm going to try to do now whilst the aeroplane is complete you want this to can't be floppy like that so I'm going to have some little angles made up here and go to the underside of the fuselage instrument panel for the fuselage instrument panel and have some MS screws and through some plate nuts on either side uh, once that is done I can that releases that and I can pull this pin should it be required and take the whole lot down to the floor to work on it a lot easier if I need to now cable routing for all of this obviously comes and goes all over the place. You don't want that hanging down so I'll have to run some sort of continuary wire from there, that side to that side. Um, a bit of square hollow section or something so I can just loosely tie all this cables up with cable ties. Or something along those lines. Routing you know, left and right from the ECB. Some things will go this way, some things will go that way. I guess. Or forward or whatever. So I'll, I'll take this instrument panel off now and commit to putting this somewhere in that. Make up some little angles to here with some plate nuts underneath and I think it should, uh, it should work okay. Hi and welcome back. I have what I believe worked this out, um, leading on from uh, all my trials and errors, what I did. So basically the ECB fits on the back side of that, um, this little uh, bracket I've made up here. So any of the works that feed into this via continuary wires, whatever, uh, out to the engine, back up to instruments and the like, is, is happily sitting behind the instrument panel uh, like that 
If it needs to be removed, I have a couple of, or at least worked on, while it's in situ, I've got a couple of little uh, plate nuts under here. So that will simply hinge down and be visible from the other side. Uh, that's now on the, that side, that side. If it needs to be removed at any, at any stage, I've put a, a hinge pin through here, which is just held in fast. It can't slip out there. That will just slip back, pull out, and it will come down if I need to. It is back on the angle because of, just let me just get that in there for a second, if I can. Um, it's back on the angle, uh, so it misses the back of the uh, V16 radio. I've stopped it enough on this side so we don't hit the, I'm going to call them VGA uh, type uh, connectors in the back of the uh, IUFIS display, so it's clear, all clear there. Uh, I think that works out, here's the, um, I'll just grab the V16 razor. That's the thickness of it there, so it's, you know, even if it was, it's got to go in there a little bit, so it's, it's still a clear distance away, I think, and there's all the, 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 uh, the VGA types of cables on that one as well. So I think it works out well. I'll upsize it now and, and rivet it in spot. Uh, hopefully it worked out well. So I'll put this in. Hi, welcome back. Okay, it's all riveted. Uh, I'm happy with it. Just put some temporary uh, screws uh, and nuts in. Now I'll probably have to replace those with stainless steel. I took, took them out of the inventory of what Sonic supplied, so I don't know if I'll have spares of those or not. But anyway, that said, easy enough to do. Happy with it. Just this removable uh, hinge pin should the faceplate have to come off after you take the little MS screws from underneath I'm on a couple of plate nuts. So I'll just bring the camera over here and you can have a little bit of a look at it, how it looks like from this side. Okay, so I've got a couple of little plate nuts in here and a couple of little spaces just to bring it up out of that lip. I didn't want to cut this little lip out because I know that's for reinforcing the, the bottom edge of the instrument panel. Uh, so that's it. And that little, uh, whoop, hopefully you can see that. That little pin just slides in to a little hole there and it's not uh, low enough that it's going to scrape someone's leg from underneath but uh, I think it's good works out fine for me I can get on to the next project there you go and just for those of you that uh, may be worried that uh, it's not going to fold down once the fuel tanks in spot if I just use my fingers as a guide you've got at least sort of easy you know, maybe three inches in the old school, 75 millimeters in uh, metric. So there's plenty of room in there, plenty of room for wiring to go through. Plenty of room for everything. Good on your Sonics.